Hey guys, so today I'm going to go through the uh, layers that I use to create this fine art photography piece. And I know there's some people that don't like the way that I do those tutorials, but I don't have the video that I created for this. Um, so I'm going to have to go through the layers on this one. Hopefully you guys can understand it and see kind of what I did and just learn some stuff for yourselves. So, yeah. All right, cool. So here's the bottom um, of the image. <clears throat> I did not start here. I started on the subject. Um, so the subject, my niece, uh, I started here. Um, so the very first thing I did was I wanted to touch up skin with uh, frequency separation. And if you guys don't know what that is, I also have a video with free actions for 8-bit and 16-bit as well. So just go to that video and download that if you want to, and you can watch more about it as well. Um, all right, so here on this one, I did some uh, liqu liquefying to make her hair bigger because uh, I like to do that, especially with like really long curly hair. So I just did that really quickly and then I did frequency separation. And you can see the difference in the frequency separation. Um, it's just a professional way to uh, touch up skin. Um, sometimes there's some weird lighting and stuff. So uh, this is my frequency separation um, that I, all the layers that I did. And you guys can go check out that video that, and I went full in depth on how to do frequency se separation. So I want to explain it on this video, but that's what I came up with. All right. So after that, I needed to cut the subject out of the, uh, background and I went ahead and did that here with just the pen tool. So you, uh, you use the pen tool and you carefully go around the subjects and you right click make selection 0 0.5 pixels okay and you have a selection of the subject but you have to do it like way better way better than that um, okay so I cut the subject out um, and now after that, I copied, I copied this. So I just press alt and dragged it up and it copied the image. Then I finalized the layer by uh, right clicking and uh, convert to smart objects. So now we have just the subject. Um, I'm going to delete that because I already did it. I already did it and it's up here. So what I had to do to make it uh, look a little bit more realistic because these this hair um, it's got uh, uh, it just doesn't look like it was you know real or it looked like it was cut out um, so what I did was I have these brushes that I made personally with <clears throat> uh, all kinds of different hair and stuff so there it is and I just uh, copied the color and use that. And here are all the layers that I use for the hair. Now just try to make it uh, kind of the same color. Uh, so this side's a bit darker than that side. Um, and I just kept going until I found that it looked like it was, it was uh, much better than it was before. All right, so at that point, I uh, shift click, click everything and press controller command, alter option plus E, and it merged that into a new layer, and that's this layer. 
So I'm going to delete this one I just did because I already did it. And then I um, unchecked these layers. So I have just the subject here. Um, <coughs> so now I started adding uh, different elements into the image. Um, I, I started with background, so I'm just going to go from the from the bottom to the top and show you exactly what I did. All right, so this first image was just a, of a beach, like a drone shot uh, on top. Um, so I thought it was really cool for, you know, what I was trying to go for. Um, so I, I wanted to change the color a bit. I wanted to desaturate it. So I desaturated that with a huge saturation adjustment layer. So just go adjustment layer, hues and saturation. Uh, curves, I used the curves to make it a little bit darker. You can see that I've made it darker and then the highlights lighter. So it's a bit of a, a contrast curve. Um, <coughs> uh, I did a, vi a vignette with a curves layer. So I just brought this down all the way. So there's no saturation in it. And I painted with a soft brush right in the middle. Uh, to give it a bit of a vignette. All right, I added this water. <coughs> and it's just water that I actually cut out from um, a picture I took a while back. Uh, just to give it a little bit of extra... Uh, <coughs> like she's in a wave almost. That's what I was trying to go for. <coughs> All right, so I added the fish behind the subject. So right away after I added, added the fish, I had to mask out the subject's arm. So it looks like the, the subject is, uh, you know, has her hand underneath the fish. So I did that right away. Um, let's see. Uh, so the colors were off <coughs> and I wanted, the, I wanted the colors to be a little bit more uniform. So I added a hue and saturation adjustment layer and um, I just went down until I felt like the colors were uh, matching a lot better. So that was a, that was much better for me. All right, so for the shadow, I needed to uh, press control and then uh, press the subject to uh, select the subject. And then on a new layer, I just press control and backspace to fill it with black. Um, and if it doesn't work, just switch and then control black. Uh, control backspace and then it'll, it'll, it'll be black um, so that's how I did this layer I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I already did it um, and I I moved it into a position to where I thought the shadow would be and then I gave it a Gaussian blur by pressing sh uh, filter blur Gaussian blur and I blurred it to make it look like it's uh, an actual shadow. And I also reduced it, the opacity to 40%. And it gave it, it a very nice shadow. And I made sure to clip this to, to the fish so the shadow didn't come off of the fish. And it makes it way more realistic and really, really nice. All right, so I wanted to add a rock element into where she's kind of like standing on it a little, little bit. So I did this just, it's just a cutout of a rock and I put a Gaussian blur on it. Um, and then I put a, a color balance just to kind of um, have a better uh, color for the image. And I darkened it quite a bit with a curves adjustment layer just on the sides here. So if you go on the side here, there's no saturation. And if you go here, there's a lot of saturation. So I just went on the side here. All right. So for this layer, um, it's uh, clipped down to the, the subject and um, the hue and saturation adjustment layer was for just like this color right here. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really I didn't really like that color very much. Um, all right, so I went to the cyan and I did these adjustments just to make the color more um, neutral because it was standing out way too much in my personal opinion. Uh, 
All right, so the selective color adjustment layer is just for the, uh, so there's always gonna be <coughs> some kind of color uh, cast on uh, something that's so close and there's light on it. So I, I wanted to make this uh, adjust adjustment layer just for that color cast on her arm and a little bit on her face as well. So this one's just a soft light adjustment layer and I gave her a little bit of color on her cheeks. All right, so these layers are just a soft, uh, uh, so you go alter option and then new new layer, then you go uh, soft light and fill with the uh, neutral gray 50% and that's how you do that. All right, I'm gonna delete that real quick and these <clears throat> they're on overlay blending mode and I uh, just painted with white a very low flow at like 4% flow um, on her eye here and I did it for this one as well it's very subtle and then I did this last one I did uh, a lot on the the eye where the 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 light is coming in on um, so yeah, those are those layers. All right, so for, for these next parts, I just uh, used a pen tool and selected parts of her dress and uh, press control or command and then T to move it into a position that I thought would look good. Um, and then I used a curves adjustment layer to kind of blend it together a bit. And then I just kept going until I felt like it was blending in well. Uh, same thing here. I did that um, with her dress and I just copied it and made another one right there and tried to blend it in with a mask. All right here, so I just used a, I just used a, a brush and the, it's a textured brush. So I made some textured brushes uh, that have like a uh, fabric texture in it and it's very subtle, but uh, I just painted um, all this stuff right here because it's way too, uh, it's way too distracting right here. So I just painted it and now uh, your eye doesn't even go there anymore. Uh, okay, so this is just a little bit of smoke with my smoke brush. Um, and a little bit more. All right, so this is a photo of a, a water balloon. So I just went in my backyard and I got a water balloon and I popped it and took a picture real quick and that's what I got from it. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, same thing here. I was doing a bunch of pictures in, in my backyard with water. So I just kind of put them together to make this cool little thing. Like she has uh, some kind of power. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. So um, this is the same thing. It's just a picture of water and I blurred that uh, for the foreground. Uh, this is a screen adjustment layer with an opacity of 27 uh, with a blue color over this just to make it have a bit of a bloom effect. Uh, this is actually snow, but I wanted it to look like water and it kind of, it, it kind of looks like there's like water spraying down stuff. And yeah, that's what I was trying to go for. Uh, here's just a little bit more water and a little bit more. Uh, I just kept building on. Uh, this one is actually uh, just sparks um, in a li linear dodge uh, blending mode. All right, so I did this curves adjustment layer to kind of uh, give it a bit more contrast. It was it was a bit bright, um, so I added contrast in. Uh, some of these areas. So I added contrast like everywhere. 
except for like right here. Um, this one, let's see. This one's the same thing, but I did it in more areas where I thought it needed a bit more. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a dodge and burn type thing. So like if you see right here, you can definitely tell that is, is kind of a, a burn. Uh, this one, I just wanted to really highlight the, the water effect. And here is the dodge. Um, so as you can see in the hair, um, there's a lot of, uh, dodge there. I did some here. I did some up here and here. Um, so yeah. All right, here is the camera raw filter. So I usually do a lot of stuff in here. Um, so for this one, uh, you can kind of just look through what I did a little bit. I want to go into like super detail and every little thing, but um, so here's the before, here's the after of all of that, all those changes. I like vibrance, so I always do that. Uh, and this just really depends on the image that you're you're creating. Um, and what you're trying to go for. So uh, these are my settings. Um, I do like to mat it a bit. So this is the line that I use to mat the image. All right, so the luminance, I, I did increase the aquas and the blues. Uh, the saturation, I increased aquas. Um, and I changed the hue a, a little bit here as well. Uh, I did a bit of a vignette um, and I gave it that teal and blue look uh, with the calibration settings. Uh, so I went down on the on the blue primary and a little bit up on the red primary and uh, desaturated the reds just a little bit. And that was the camera raw filter. All right, so here I'm starting to try to trying to uh, put the colors together a little bit better. Um, so this one's the shadows. Um, so I went plus six on the blues and then negative one. So uh, one on magenta. Uh, so I double click this. And I separated these two to take the effect out of the highlights. So I just want to target the shadows. So I press uh, Alt and you're able to um, disconnect this. Uh, so that's how I did that. And I did the exact same thing except opposite on this one. So this one's the highlights. I did plus 25 red on the highlights and negative three uh, for magenta. Double click the layer and took it out of the shadows. So I just wanted that in the highlights. All right, so I put this at a 35% um, opacity and I used the three strip look on that one. I did a bit more of a matte uh, line because I wasn't really happy with it. Uh, brightness contrast, I did a more vignette because I wasn't happy with that one either. So that was that. And then I brightened the center to kind of make it pop a little bit. All right, so here I just uh, I painted with a textured brush with uh, some things that I, I found distracting, like this this line right here. I found that I don't I didn't want it, and it it was very distracting to me. So I just painted that. I painted a little bit more back here as well. All right, so this is a high pass filter uh, to sharpen the image. As you can see, it is a significant sharpen. So it's a super awesome way to sharpen things. And what you do is you press uh, Alt or Option and then new, ta uh, new layer and then go soft light, fill with 50% gray, okay. Then I like to put mine as a smart filter. Um, so just right click, convert to smart object, uh, filter, other, high pass, and then you want to go from anywhere from two to four. Uh, 
for this image, let me see. I'm gonna delete this because I don't need it. So for this sharpen, I used 2.2 and it did a really, really good sharp sharpen. All right, so um, after that, I press Controller Command, Alt or Option, plus Shift plus E to merge everything into a new layer. I right click, convert to smart object, and then I went uh, filter, blur, gallery, uh, iris blur on this one. So I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna delete this real quick, and I'll show you the blur gallery iris blur. So I went 18 pixels and it did a nice blur around the edges. All right, so I really like to do this for tonal contrasting and I think it's super important to do tonal contrasting. So I put uh, a black and white adjustment layer. So just uh, adjustment layer, black and white, and I put it into a luminosity blending mode and I changed these values to kind of make it lighter and darker. As you can see, it's a very, very powerful tool to use for tonal contrasting. So I went ahead and did that and that's what I came up with. All right, so for this hue, hue and saturation adjustment layer, I felt like the reds were way too much. Um, so I went into reds and I desaturated it and made it a little bit darker as well. Uh, this is just a small adjustment to the, the brightness in the center with the cur curves adjustment layer. All right, this is a super important part. Um, very composite. You want to make it look like it's consistent with the noise. And, uh, there's a lot of things that, um, have variations in noise levels. So this is important. So like before I just press alt or option and then new layer, soft light fill with 50% gray, uh, right click, convert to smart objects and filter noise, add noise. I do Gaussian and monochromatic at 20. And that is how I add noise to the image to kind of bring it together a bit better Then, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope that you were able to take a little bit from that. Um, if anybody wants some Photoshop assets that I have created myself, uh, please let me know in the comments. I do have a website, uh, but it's not online right now. But if there are people that uh, are interested in that kind of thing, just let me know and I will open my website once again. Um, I hope that you guys learned something and um, if, you, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'd very much appreciate that. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment. I would I would be happy to answer any any questions you guys have. I do take commissions, so please feel free to go ahead over to Instagram. And I uh, I run most of my business off of Instagram, so go to Instagram and feel free to DM me for any commissions. Um, and I'd be happy to to do that for you guys. Uh, so that's all I have for you guys. Have a good one.